We good? We're here, right? Right on time. Like a good class, right on time. All right, well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to uh, Wednesday study. So it's been a few weeks since we've been in our Israel study. So actually two, three, three weeks, three weeks since it's been. So uh, we're going to begin that back. Um, lesson 17, page 190. And also just a, just a, an announcement next week is going to be a worship night. So we'll all be in the sanctuary. So all the groups and be over there. So it's been, Vicki, at your request. <laughs> Thank you. It's been two years, hasn't it? It's been a long time. So it's this will be good. This will be a good time. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good crowd and we'll have a good time of just seeking God and just pressing in to a good night of worship and praise and thanksgiving as we enter the Thanksgiving season. So it's a good, good season to have um, a night devoted to worship. So that'll be next Wednesday. All right, so Lesson 17, page 190. So the last, um, the last time we were together, we covered some of the peace agreements from the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s, the Oslo Accords, the Israeli settlements, the Camp David Summit. We learned about Israel's. Israeli attempts at peace and Palestinian unwillingness to cooperate. And so today we're going to look at some key events. Basically, the key events are conflicts. So there's a, from about 2005 to present day, which it's, it's just a list of the different challenges. It seems like every two, three, four years, there's, there's a new conflict. So that's what we're going to look at today. And then at the end, I'm going to read... Um, I've got some scriptures I'm going to read. And so um, let's begin with the verse. It says in uh, Psalms 83, verse, verses 2 and 4, it says, For behold, your enemies make an uproar, and those who hate you have exalted themselves. This is the psalmist. I'm going to read this, this whole psalm at the end, but this is the psalmist praying to God. Israel's enemies are your enemies, God says, those who hate you have exalted themselves. They make shrewd plans against your people and conspire together against our treasured ones. They have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation. Of course, that's the goal of all of these nations. and It's, it's to wipe Israel out as a nation. That's why there's been so much trouble with peace, why other nations and don't want to cooperate with Israel because they want to wipe them out as a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Isn't that what, what it's all about? That the name of Israel be remembered no more. The, the BDS movement, boycott, divest, sanction. Do you remember boycott, divest, sanction? If, if you don't remember it, you need to know it because it's happening right now. The squad, uh, AOC, all those crazy ladies up there are pushing BDS, BDS boycott, divest, sanction. I uh, saw something the other day where uh, Kamala Harris is in a classroom and there's this student just just <laughs> spewing out Jew hatred, Jew, you know, Jew, the, uh, the Israelis, it's an apartheid state. This is a few weeks ago. And, and so that student is schooling the vice president and the vice president's sitting there nodding, nodding. I'm thinking, no, it's this, 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 this. It's not nodding. You're not in agreement with it. So it's happening. She probably is. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, the, the nation is not in agreement. The nation is not in agreement for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's out there. It's out there. The United Nations uh, is, I mean, of course, you know that. It is, it is anti-Israel. It's anti-Israel. And so um, let's look at part one, from 2005 to 2014. It says, in June 2004, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, do you remember Ariel Sharon before Netanyahu? Ariel Sharon um, announced plans to disengage from Gaza. Gaza was territory that Israel had won during the Six-Day War in 1967. We looked at Gaza. There's map, maps in the book on Gaza. 
southeast, it butts up to Egypt, just a little strip of land. And so Israel had hoped that withdrawing from Gaza would be an important step toward peace with the Palestinians. So in 2005, Israel left Gaza, uprooting 1,700 families, 21 Jewish communities, schools, synagogues were closed, graves, military bases relocated, greenhouses, other structures from previously. Israeli communities were left behind for Palestinians' use and benefits, all for the purpose. Well, we'll leave it behind, and then we'll have peace with the Palestinians. You're right. Schools and synagogues. Graves, military bases, relocated. Think about that. Graves relocated. Greenhouses. Other structures from previously Israeli communities were left behind for Palestinian use and benefit. But when Israel withdrew, the Palestinians, instead of using these buildings, they destroyed the buildings. They destroyed the synagogues. And after Israel's withdrawal, the Palestinian Authority did not have a smooth transition into full control of Gaza and the leadership vacuum led to the terrorist group Hamas's rise to power. And Hamas is, they're famous. They are famous to this day. Just to this day, Hamas diverts humanitarian resources away from the people in Gaza to buy weapons and dig tunnels for their war against Israel. The money that goes to the Palestine authority, the PLO, you know who gets most of the money? Hamas. Is it going to the aid of the people of Palestine to the poor people? No, it's going to this group right here, Hamas. This militant group that has basically taken over and in cahoots with, with that government. And so uh, the Ham Hamas uses the resources to buy weapons, dig tunnels for their war, against Israel. Since 2005, 15,000 rockets have been fired into Israel by Gaza-based terrorist groups. And so that was 2000, well basically 2005 to now. <laughs> 2005, the, the rise of Hamas. This city of Sederet, if you look at, if you look at a map of the Gaza Strip, Sederet is the top, just right at the little top tip of the Gaza Strip, located, it says less than a mile from Gaza. Fifteen seconds, if when a when a, a rocket is launched, they have fifteen seconds to to reach a bomb shelter. There is six thousand bomb shelters in Sederet, and I just found this interesting. It's called the bomb shelter capital of the world. So imagine being a resident of. Sederet and uh, have to live under the constant threat of rocket fire. Do y'all remember when, um, when the Israelis pulled out of the Gaza Strip? I actually do. I, was, I wasn't too familiar with all of this at the time, but I'm like, it's like, why? You know, it was just... I know more now, but I, I didn't. I didn't understand why would why would you do this? Why would you just uproot all your family and kids and, and all of that? But it didn't work. It never works. <laughs> Anytime Israel has yielded land that belong that God says is your land, and they've yielded up, it never works. There's never peace. <laughs> There's never peace. So Hamas, Hamas is a Palestinian militant uh, Muslim Muslim group. Uh, let's see. And I looked it up, Sunni, Sunni Muslims is Hamas. Uh, so you have a, a, Shia, a Shia Muslim group, Hezbollah. Hezbollah is the, uh, the terrorist group out of uh, Lebanon. So Hamas, Palestine terror group, Hezbollah is the Lebanon terror group. And so in 2006 was the Lebanon war. July 12, 2006, Hezbollah crossed the Lebanese-Israeli border. Lebanon is at the very top, Golan Heights, so they crossed down, ambushed an IDF patrol, killed eight soldiers, kidnapped two others. And in the ensuing conflict, Israel bombed Hezbollah strongholds, 
while the terrorists launched rockets at Israel's northern population centers. Five weeks of fighting, Hezbollah launched 100 rockets per day into Israel. Families slept in their bomb shelters. And so to make matters more complicated, the IDF had to face the enemy that purposely hid among the civilian population in Lebanon. The terrorists stored their weapons in homes, private homes, fired their rockets from neighborhoods filled with women and children. Knowing that Israel values human life, Hezbollah used the Arab people as human shields. As human shields, Israel was under intense international pressure and criticism for the unavoidable civilian deaths. That's just how it is. They, the terrorists, like cowards, hide behind the children and the women and shoot from the hospitals. And then when Israel is forced to retaliate, if there's an unavoidable death, well, Israel gets blamed. The war ended with the ceasefire on August 11, 2006. Israel withdrew without destroying Hezbollah, but the IDF was able to severely cripple their operations in Lebanon. And two years later, Hezbollah released the, body, released the bodies of the two kidnapped IDF soldiers. Any thoughts on the Lebanon war? This chapter is basically just information showing you the constant threat that Israel has been under. Every two to four years, there is a new major conflict between the Gaza, Palestinian, Hamas, to Lebanon, to Hezbollah, to Gaza Strip. It's just a, it's a nonstop, nonstop conflict. So that's uh, Hezbollah. Two years later, back to the Gaza Strip, back to Hamas. At the bottom of the page, the operation cast, cast lead. I don't know if that's lead or lead. So after three years of rocket fire from Gaza, Israel's people could take no more. The IDF entered Gaza on December 27, 2008. So um, you get the picture. Rockets are flying from the north, from Lebanon. Gaza is the south. So it's just a constant. You're gonna have, you've got them flying from Lebanon. You've got them flying from Gaza. So, I mean, it's just like they, <laughs> it, 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 they could take no more. Three years of just nonstop rocket fire from the south. So IDF went into the Gaza Strip December 27, 2008. And their objective during the operation was to stop the smuggling of weapons into Gaza and to stop indiscriminate rocket fire into Israel. So Israel initiated airstrikes, striking 100 targets within 220 seconds. The Israeli Air Force is one of the top in the world, if not the, the top. Hamas's headquarters... Hamas's headquarters, terrorist houses, rocket launcher, and missile stockpiles were targeted. 140 terrorists were killed on the first day. So, uh, hindered by Gaza's population density and the fact that Hamas terrorists hit among the civilians, the IDF faced a huge challenge. So, I mean, they, they hid behind the civilians up north in Lebanon, so here they're doing the same thing. They launched rockets from schools, mosques, hospitals, buildings owned by the United Nations. And when Israel retaliated, the international media focused on stories about Israel bombing schools instead of blaming the terrorists for using human shields. To save as many innocent lives as possible, Israel voluntarily gave up the strategic advantage of surprise. And it said that they sent voicemail messages in Arabic to the thousands of Gazan residents before sending in an airstrike. <laughs> so, I mean, warning, whatever it is, warning, we're coming in. We're coming. I mean, that is very humanit humanitarian. <laughs> I mean, that's very polite. Just want to let you know we're going to be bombing, so you might want to leave. So it actually gave, it gave the terrorists an opportunity to escape as well. 22 days later, an, Isra 
uh, Israel announced a unilateral ceasefire. Rockets continue to be launched into Israel by Hamas to this day. So that's four, six, eight. There's a little pause here. A few years into 12, 2012. November 14th, 2012, Israel launched Operation Pillar of Defense in response to a barrage of more than 150 rockets fired into Israel by terrorist organizations in Gaza in one day. Israel's goal for the operation was to decrease the number of rocket attacks on Israeli civilians. And the operation began with the elimination of the head of Hamas's military branch in Gaza, Ahmed Jabari. And during the eight days that the operation lasted, Israel targeted 1,500 terrorist sites, including major command headquarters and control rooms and Hamas bases. Meanwhile, the terrorist groups fired more than 1,500 rockets into Israel, reaching into Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. For the first time, six civilians, Israeli civilians, were killed and more than 200 others were wounded from these rockets. Many more civilians had to be treated for anxiety following the attacks hours before a ceasefire and Arab Israeli detonated a bus bomb wounding 28. Nonetheless, Israel managed to significantly damage the launching capabilities and missile arsenals of terrorist organizations in Gaza. A ceasefire was reached after days of negotiations. Eight days later. Twenty fourteen. <laughs> Operation Protective Edge. For eight years, Israelis along the border with Gaza had endured daily rocket fire from Hamas. But in the summer of twenty fourteen, while Israel was searching for three kidnapped teenagers, the rocket attack suddenly escalated. For weeks, Israel's government sought to negotiate a ceasefire with Hamas without success. So on July 7th, Hamas fired over 100 rockets into Israeli neighborhoods in one day. The situation had become untenable. Israel had to act. So the very next day, Israel brought in a ground invasion in, into Gaza, sending in soldiers to fight the cramped streets and booby-trapped buildings of the Gaza Strip. Wasn't an easy decision because it put Israeli soldiers in extreme danger, but also minimized the chances of accidental civilian casualties. As Israel entered Gaza, they discovered an even more dangerous threat. Hamas had secretly built a network of underground tunnels beneath the border with Israel. The terrorists intended to use these tunnels to infiltrate Israel's towns and kidnap and murder Israeli citizens. Several times during the war, Hamas sent groups of terrorists into Israel through these tunnels, sometimes disguised in IDF uniforms. Thankfully, none of their planned massacres succeeded, but the discovery of this new threat alarmed Israel. The tunnels had to be destroyed. Hamas finally accepted a ceasefire agreement. Israel had successfully destroyed the tunnels beneath the border and dealt a crippling blow to the terrorist infrastructure. Israel's actions during the war were exonerated and praised by an independent assessment of NATO's military leaders who stated in their 2015 report that the IDF had conducted itself by the highest possible moral standards. Ooh, boy, that's a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let me take a break there for reading. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on this? We don't watch TV very much anymore in the way of news. We get our news from internet and different mm. locations. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> but are, are the, I mean, I know that there's bombing still going on around Israel. I mean, you, you hear about them periodically. Is the news concentrating on any of that anymore? Because it used to be you, you ate supper with the evening news with nothing but the Lebanese Israeli problem. The Gaza problem and all the bombings and everything. We, we ate it and drank it and, you know. Mm -hmm. Are they doing that? Do we know? I mean, is the media covering any of that anymore? No, I mean, it might have. 
might have died down. I mean, I haven't heard of an attack since May. Okay. You know, there might be some isolated incidents, but um, matter of fact, I actually have, bringing it into the modern era, May the 10th through the 18th, 3,440 rockets fired from Gaza. We all know about that just a few months ago. Thousands of rockets fired from Gaza into that Sederet, Ashkelon, which is which is another border, it's a minute right on the coast, Ashdad and Jerusalem. Ninety percent of the rockets, I mean, you remember this is this just happened a few months yeah, ago. Ninety percent right. of the rockets Did were the news intercepted. Cover that? Mm -hmm. yes. Did the news cover that? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. but uh, here's so uh, so this is from CNBC. So you know this is going to be pro-Israel, right? <laughs> Israel, I mean, I, I just Googled up. I just Googled it up to see. So CNBC, Israel airstrikes kill 33 Palestinians. That's the headlines. Um, in the mean, meantime, 3,000 rockets are flying in. I just highlighted the pre-dawn attacks were on houses in the center of Gaza City. So evil Israel fired on the houses. Yeah, they hit innocent people's houses. That's just, just NBC. The death toll in Gaza jumped to 181, including 52 children. I mean, and that's terrible because these people are innocent people. Remember, this is not... I mean, we saw the Palestinians... Look, when you're over there, the Palestinians and Jews, they live in peace. They live in peace. The Muslims are worshiping and doing their prayers. The Jews are worshiping all in the same area. The Christians are worshiping. It's these terrorist organizations. It's the government. <laughs> it's the government. So, yeah, we should, we should feel bad for these. And in, in, in that session of rocket attacks and stuff, Israel was still given a warning. In 30 minutes, this building's going to be blown up. Oh. So the people that were being harmed in the buildings, apparently somebody wasn't letting them out. Right. So, but that's what, you know, that's how they kind of slammed the mm -hmm. news. Uh, well, this that's is propaganda that yeah. they could use. It, it's proper. It is. It's 100% propaganda. Israel claims all of Jerusalem. This is all part of that NBC ad. Israel claims all of Jerusalem as its capital. Wow, how dare Israel claim <laughs> Jerusalem, the city of God, the city of David, as its capital. A status not generally recognized internationally. I mean, look at Look at a picture of Israel, ancient Israel, and look at a picture now. It's like one-third the original size. Palestinians won East Jerusalem, captured by Israel in the 1967 Arab-Israeli War as the capital of a future state. That's just one thing I highlighted. But anyways, um, there's been, I haven't heard of anything lately. It's, I mean, it's certainly not, it, it's people don't live in fear. I mean, it's certainly not a. It's really not that you don't even feel like there's dan too much danger. It's it's just it's just odd if you, if you're asking if there's a if there's a continual threat. I mean, there yes, there's a threat. There is, yeah, I mean, but people they they're resilient. I mean, they go to work, they uh, clean up, keep moving on. You know. But um, yeah, it, just keep in mind it's it's the fringe. You you, we've got to be careful because obviously we're we're for God's people, the Jewish people, and pro-Israel. But we got to be careful that we don't we don't label the good Palestinian people with the terrorists because that's that that can even Jewish as pro-Jew pro-Zionist that could cause us to be biased against the Palestinians. They're good people. They're peaceful people. The the majority of Christians are Palestinian. Um, the majority of the Christians over there are from Palestinian. So, I mean, these are people that love Jesus. In Bethlehem, these people love Jesus. <laughs> so we need to be praying for them and, and not, not forget about them. The problem is Hezbollah and uh, the Hamas. The Hamas, that's the yeah. Small, that's the yep. small, small minority that are, are causing all the problems. Yep. That's it. 
Second plane. That's it. Second plane. All the way around the world. Mm -hmm. Well, and just as look at the junk in America. It's a small minority of these fringe radical movements. All of the all of the consonants, the L's and the G's and the B's and the T's and the Q's and the whatever. It's a small fringe that is so powerful that just has everybody believing that this is it. But no, it's, you know, that's how the devil operates. The devil takes that small little voice and makes that small voice appear louder than what it really is. It, so there's, there's a lot of application to that. You know, I know Israel is always about peace and they're wanting peace for their country, but do you, do you think it's God's will that they keep giving up the land that he gave them in order to achieve this peace? Certainly all of this is, all of this is prophetic in nature. That is just so far, I don't know. Who can know the mind of the Lord? <laughs> it's so... <laughs> Because we know one day Jesus is going to take every single bit of it back. But even when they went into um, Canaan and they didn't kill all the Canaanites. Ooh. And so they've been fighting them ever since. Today. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. right. They're just saying that. Yeah, right. you're right. Yeah. Now that's a... That is, I'm going to give you a... Four star for deep theological thought because that is a very good, yeah, that is a very deep thought. He said to wipe them out, they didn't wipe them out. Well, there are several conflicts in ancient Israel where they didn't wipe out the enemy and it came back to haunt them. You can't negotiate, you... yes, it's, it's consequences all. of nothing else, it's consequences of past. But I don't see, I, I personally don't see Israel giving up anything ever again. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I think they'll stand. I, I think it's, yeah, their mindset is no. And that's how they are with Hamas and Hezbollah. They'll take it for a certain length of time, then they're going to do what they have to mm -hmm. do. They're not going to. Yeah, they definitely have a, they definitely have a right to live in, to live in peace for sure. Another thing to note, today is the third anniversary of the, uh, the Pittsburgh Tree of Life Synagogue shooting. Remember that? The 11 were killed. That's today. I saw that come up, I think, in the Kufi news, the news feed that comes up every day. Let me read some, some scriptures. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read that Psalms 83. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a, to a tumult. Those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. So it's a league of nations. Notice how, notice how the psalmist here says that this isn't just against us. This is against you. This is against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites and Moab, the Hegrites, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. So all of those, those are the descendants of the, um, the descendants of Arab, Arab descendants right there. It says here in part two, at the, at the bottom of page 194, today Israel still faces significant terrorism from Gaza at the hands of Hamas and the ruthless Iran-backed Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Since March 2018, protesters have gathered weekly on the Gaza-Israel border, rioting, engaging in acts of violence and destruction on Israel. Hamas leaders, they have shamefully put civilians in harm's way 
hiding among them, carrying out various terror attacks against the IDF Border Patrol. When it says Iran back, they are the number one sponsor of all these terror organizations. The, the, the uh, how much was it the, uh, under the Obama administration? 400 billion in just cash. Here you go. Is that what, yeah, how much was it? Billion. 150 billion. Here you go. Yeah. Where's, where did that money go? There's, there's terror. Terror is still spending it. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know much about all this stuff, but common sense there. You know, if, and they knew that. They knew that. So that's why people are mad. Because <laughs> it's, you know what they're going to do with that money, don't you? So there's an agenda behind it. So if anyone who is for giving them money, knowing where it's going to go, that is, that's Jew hatred. That's anti-Semitism right there. That is, you know it's going to go to people wanting to wipe off, kill out the Jews. It's what it is. I mean, it's just. This quad is trying to get Biden not to give them any more money for shooting the. Yeah, the uh, Iron Dome and all that. Yeah, they're fighting. I, don't, I think they still funded it, though, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It's a, but still. <laughs> look at all the. They need to show their hand. Yeah, I mean, look at the. They stand for, and then people will know how to vote. Mm hmm. But something about he's wanting to put a Palestinian um, consulate, consulate mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Yeah, uh, Israel 365 News has something about that. I don't understand yeah, that I'm completely, but basically what that will do is that will bring <laughs> legitimacy to the Palestinian authority there in Jerusalem. Yeah. See, we... Uh, a couple years ago, we brought the embassy. We recognized Jerusalem as a capital. So basically what this is, it's basically a slap in the face. <laughs> basically say, no, we're, no, nah, Jerusalem, go, it, you know, it, it belongs to the, the Palestinians as well. So I don't, I don't understand. I don't want to comment too much on it, but there is an article. Uh, there is an article about that, that it actually violates some laws that were passed some previous laws that were passed in the 90s. Uh, but it's crazy. It's absolutely, it's absolutely crazy. See, here, here's, we talk, about, we talk about certain issues. We talk about anti-Semitism. And, and everybody would agree, you know, racism is wrong. Injustice is wrong. Anti-Semitism is wrong. But if some, but how can we vote for somebody who is for this? You cannot say, I'm, a, I'm against racism, I'm against anti-Semitism, and vote for people that are for giving money to Iran to give to Hamas to blow away the Jews. You know, it, it's, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, does it? It doesn't, it doesn't compute. <laughs> so uh, it says here... Uh, if it's not missiles fl flying from Gaza into Israel, it's all these different concoctions and homemade, homemade bombs. October 2019, the PIJ, that's the Palestinian Is Islamic Jihad, launched over 300 rockets into Israel over the course of three days, wounding 50 Israeli citizens. Um, basically, you can... You can read the rest. Israel suffers constant threats of terror from Hamas and PIJ in Gaza. The situation between the terror groups and Israel has been described as a ticking time bomb that could explode into a full-fledged war at any moment. It's only a matter of time before Israel cannot tolerate this devastation much longer, so long as terrorist groups continue in their vendetta to destroy Israel and its citizens. Even while, see, this is, this is key, even while putting their own people, the Palestinian people, in jeopardy. If you really care for the Palestinian people, you cannot support this PLO and all that. 
The ones that are pro- free Palestine, free Palestine, but they're, but they're for giving all the money to the terrorist organizations. You're not for a free Palestine, are you? If you really care, if you really care for the Palestinian people, the, the poor men, women, and children that want to live in peace, if you really care for them, you're going to be pro-Israel. You're going to be pro-Israel all the way. Because pro-Israel, they are human. They take care of the Palestinians. Good. Something we learned while we were there that I never, I never would have imagined is, you know, we when we hear Palestinian, we shouldn't think bad people. Palestinians aren't bad people. We talked about it earlier. It's the it's it's this very small element. Many Palestinians serve in the uh, Israeli Defense Force. Mm-hmm. They they enlist. That's a good point. Uh, they enlist in the Israeli. It's their country. Yeah, they, they want. They That's want right. Their country. They want peace. They want peace with Gaza, the folks, the Hamas and the Hezbollah, mm-hmm. and all of them. So they actually join and serve as well. Yeah, it'd be the equivalent of like somebody immigrating from Russia or wherever and serving in our military. They love our values. They love our standards. So they want to serve. And it's the same thing. Israel. They love what Israel stands for. Yeah. That's a very good point. Look at uh, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 41. For us, we know that this is not a political issue. It is not a political issue. It's a prophetic, it's a biblical issue. I had a guy call me this week from Clay Today Online a reporter talking about the Israel trip. And a matter of fact, Mark talked to him as well. So I used it. He was asking, well, there were in the Jerusalem Post, there's an article I did with the Jerusalem Post. So it's, it's out there. So it triggered something where he saw community church, Keystone Heights, Israel, in the Jerusalem Post, you know. And so it triggered, like, wow, that's, that's something. So he wanted to talk about the trip. I wanted to talk about how it was. So I began the interview saying, okay, let me preface everything. And, and I w- wanted to reinforce that we support Israel. We're involved with Christians United for Israel. So I got into the, the preface of Israel and, and all of that. But he basically said, yeah, you know, I don't usually, I know that's a hot topic and I usually don't get into political issues and blah, blah, blah. So I basically said, it's not a political issue for us. It's not a political issue whatsoever for us. It's right, wrong, it's Bible. We're Christians. We owe a debt of gratitude to the Jewish people. We have Jesus. We have the prophets. We have the Bible. And so it was a good opportunity so, um, to, to share what, we're church is all, what our church is all about. And, um, and I, I told him, I said, well, I hope you mention that about our church being pro-Israel, 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 pro-Israel. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know when the article is going to be out. What's uh, it coming out? Uh, Clay today. It's supposed to be out tomorrow. Okay. He told me his deadline to get it published was yesterday, and he expected it would be published on okay. Thursdays. He's a very nice guy, and I think it'll be. I think it'll be a good, fair or article. Today, yeah. Sorry. Today was the day. It was time to get it finished, to get it in, to get it published for tomorrow. Okay. So Clay today. So we'll see. But uh, this is. Isaiah 41, I was reading this today, verse verse 8, the prophet says, But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Well, this is God speaking through the prophet. You, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, Israel, whom I have chosen. The descendants of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the work of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is speaking to his people, Israel. I know this is a verse that we claim (laughs) for ourselves, 
you know, it's, oh, we thank you, God, that you're, you'll strengthen me and, and uphold us with, with your righteous right hand. But the fact is he's speaking this to his people, Israel, even though they're spread, even though they disobeyed God, even though they, they fell into sin, God says, you're still my people. He says in verse 11, Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. It's a pretty stark promise to the enemies of Israel. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who were against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. This is actually pointing to the time when Jesus returns. And he speaks that word and wipes out Israel's enemies in the valley of Megiddo. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. Uh, fear not, I will help you. So everything that we're talking about, all of the enemies that's come against Israel, yes, they have victories from time to time. Um, yeah, it's, it's a battle right now, even throughout the nations and the United Nations and in the United States of America and so forth. But this just confirms what we are, we're on the right side of this. We're on the right side of this. <laughs> And we've got no choice but to be defenders and lovers of God's people. We've got no choice. Right? right. How can we not do it? <laughs> so I don't care what people I don't care what people think of me for preaching this. I could care less. I could care less if it upsets people. I could care less if it upsets churches in town. If we're the only church. And I know we're not. There's so many good churches. But if we were still the only ones that was standing up for this. We still do it, don't we? We still do it. We still do it. Any, uh, any thoughts to, as we close? I find it very interesting that with all the excavations and everything that they find, it's always confirming Bible. Yeah. Always. Never. I don't remember seeing or hearing anything about Palestinian ruins or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? I don't. It's all Israeli. Mm -hmm. That's true. Jewish ruins. Yeah, it is. The David, Bible. the kings. Yep. That's for sure. Every day they're finding something, finding something new. So, well, let's close in prayer, and we'll sign off, and and then we'll we'll have some prayer time here, and pray for some special requests. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us, Father, and we thank you, Lord, for just increasing our knowledge we're so grateful for jesus we're so grateful for salvation and we just love we love your word and we love your scriptures and the power of your spirit but but father also we thank you for just the knowledge that you've given us here uh, just being being aware of current events just like you uh, spoke of the sons of issachar how they they were aware of the times father we want to be aware of the times father uh, we know that we, we want to do our part. We know that ultimately prophecy is, you're bringing prophecy to pass, but we want to just do our part to, in the program, Father. We want to be faithful to the end. We want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We want to be a blessing to Israel. And because uh, we know that when we do it, we're blessing you because you are, this, this land, it is the apple of your eye, Father. And this, the whole story of Israel is the story of your faithfulness. And that, that's what we can never forget. It's not just a historical story about, about a people. It's the story of God. It's your story, how you have remained faithful to your covenant, to your people. And that just reassures our faith, Father, that you'll never leave us. 
you'll never forsake us. So we just pray that we would be that light to the world in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, we're signing off online. God bless y'all.